In this video, we are going to take a look at the lesson seven, um, or sorry, unit seven, lesson one practice problems. So in this diagram, we want to determine the um, values of X, Y, and Z. So in this lesson, you talked about some different vocabulary terms. Um, and so we talked about a diameter. And then we also know that a central angle here is equal to the measure of the intercepted arc. So a central angle is formed at the center of the circle and um, a radius or two radii actually. So we've got this one formed here by this radius and this radius. So this value here for X is gonna be the same as this central angle. So this is 20 degrees. Then we also know with a diameter that the diameter um, is a straight line. So it's 180 degrees, it cuts the circle in half. So a 180 degree arc as well. Um, so this angle here, Z is gonna be 180 minus that 20. So Z is gonna be 160 degrees. And then the arc of Y is going to be the same as that central angle of Z. So Y is going to be 160 degrees as well. So in example two or in question two, we wanna use our vocabulary here. Um, so give an example in the image of each segment. So we wanna come up with a diameter. Remember that a diameter needs to go through the center and the center is A. So a diameter could be BC. So it goes from one edge to the other through the center. Um, it is a cord that goes through the center. Could also be looking at GH as a um, diameter, just the segment from G to H. And then a cord that is not a diameter, so one that goes from side to side but does not go through point A, so a segment that does not go through point A. So we could say DE for that one. And then a radius is just going to go from the center, so from A to the edge. So we've got quite a few um, radii here, so A out to B would be a radii. Um, the other side of that red segment would be A to C. So both of those are radii. Um, if we start at A and go to G, that's a radius. A to H would also be a radius. So just splitting that diameter in half. And those would be, it doesn't look like there's any other radii there. So there is four um, radii just split from those diameters. Number three, identify whether each statement must be true, could possibly be true, or definitely cannot be true. So a diameter is a cord. This is always true. So this must be true. Remember that a cord has to go from um, side to side in a circle. So let me just get a circle on here. So a cord has to go from edge to edge and a diameter just is a cord that goes through the center. So a diameter has to go from edge to edge. Absolutely does have to every single time. Um, a radius is a cord. Remember a cord has to go from edge to edge. A radius goes from center to edge. So a radius does not go edge to edge. So this is never true, okay? It definitely cannot be true. Um, a cord is a diameter. So remember the definition of a cord is it just needs to go from edge to edge. So we know that a cord could be a diameter. Okay, it could go through the center. It does not have to. This would be an example of a cord that does not go through the diameter, goes edge to edge, or sorry, does not go through the center. Goes edge to edge, does not go through the center. So this one could be true, doesn't have to be true. And then a central angle has a measure of 90 degrees. Um, that's certainly possible. Okay, so let's just move this radius here. 
So here's a bunch of different central angles. This is a central angle. All of these are central angles that are being formed by this red radius and the green diameter. Okay, so certainly could be 90 degrees. Okay, there's a 90 degree angle for the central angle, um, but does certainly doesn't have to be. Okay, we could have one like this, much smaller. Number four, write the equation of the altitude from vertex A. So let me highlight the altitude on here. So here is your altitude. Remember, an altitude goes from a vertex perpendicular to the opposite side. So we see this red segment is the altitude. Let's write the equation of it. So an equation um, in point slope form would be y minus the y coordinate equals the slope times x minus the x coordinate. So let's determine the slope of this line. So we see um, for the slope, we, we could try to count this one. Okay, I see a point here, and then I don't see another point that it crosses. It's going to be off the grid. So instead, we would maybe want to count the slope of BC because we know that these two lines are perpendicular. So we could actually come up with the slope of BC since we can see two points that this crosses at. Okay, so I could count the slope down to um, and then count this over nine. So the slope of BC is negative two ninths. So if I want the slope of the perpendicular line that's going to be the opposite, so positive, and the reciprocal, so flip the um, 9 over 2, or slip, flip the 2 over 9 to 9 over 2. So the opposite reciprocal is 9 halves. Then we just need a point that this red altitude goes through. Well, we can use point A. So point A is the point 2, 1. So we do Y minus the Y coordinate which is one and X minus the X coordinate, which is two. And then you can certainly just leave it in point slope form. Um, triangle ABC has these vertices. What is the point of intersection of the medians? So let's go ahead. I'm just going to get a graph for this so I can graph it to talk about it. So let me graph these um, points first. All right. So the point, let's see, um, 5, 0, 1, 6. 9, 3, and then I'm just going to connect those with segments. All right, so the medians of a triangle connect one vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So I'm going to go ahead and get a different color here. Um, so we need to find the midpoint of each of these sides. Actually, I'm going to label these points as 1, 6, 9, 3, and then 5, 0. So we'll want to find um, the midpoint of the sides. So if we take a look here, the kind of halfway between the x's, so this is an x of 1 to 5, Halfway between 1 and 5, we can just add those together and divide by 2. Okay, so that's 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then do the same for the y's. So find the middle of 6 plus 0. Okay, but 6 plus 0 is just going to be 6. And then divided by 2 gives us 3. So the point 3, 3 is our midpoint. So then we can connect that segment to the vertex of the opposite side. And the nice thing here is that this median is a horizontal line. And the median actually gets split in a two to one ratio. Okay, so two to one 
Um, it's going to split this segment up into three parts, two of them coming from the vertex and then um, one after what's called the centroid or the point of intersection. So this segment, let's just count how long it is. One, two, three, four, five, six units. So if I split that into three equal parts, each part is going to be two units or two squares. So we want two of these coming out of the vertex. Okay, so one, two of these, here's going to be where the medians intersect. So this is a two part to one part split. So if we just figure out the ordered pairs here, that's going to be five, three, that is where the medians intersect. You could certainly have found the midpoint of another side and then connected it. So you could have found the midpoint here, connected it and seen where these crossed as well. Consider the parallelogram with these vertices. Where do the diagonals of the parallelogram intersect? So I'm going to grab another graph here so that we can plot these. can certainly do it a different way without graphs also, but I like to graph them. All right, so we got the point 0, 0, 8, 0, um, 4, 6. And then 12, so this is eight. Let me do this. Let me change this so that we can fit this on here. So let me move this over a little bit. All right, so let's fix this. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then one, two, three, four, three, four, five, six. All right, and then so this is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 6. All right, then let's connect this to see our parallelogram. All right, so where are the diagonals of this parallelogram going to intersect? So the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Okay, so that means that the diagonal is going to get split in half. So you can just do this if you've graphed it and find that point. Okay, so once you connect them, you could actually just count out to that point. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. Okay, the other way is that you would find the midpoint of one of the diagonals. And I'm going to use zero, zero, because it's going to be pretty easy to find the midpoint here with 12, 6. Because remember, midpoint is the middle of the x's. So we would do 12 plus 0, which is 12, divided by 2. And then for the y's, we would add the y's, which is 6 plus 0, or 6, divided by 2. And that gives us 6, 3, just like we found through graphing. Number 7. Lines L and P are parallel, select all true statements. Um, and this one is actually labeled incorrectly um, in your book. Um, so they actually labeled this incorrectly. So this should be D and then this should be C. All right, so triangle ABD, okay, so ABD, so this triangle here, is congruent, okay, or the same size to triangle C, E, F. So are these two triangles the same size? That's a no. Um, and it says for this next one, the slope of L is equal to the slope of P. Well, the lines are parallel. So yes, they have the same slope. Um, then those two triangles again, A, B, D, and C, E, F, okay, are they similar? Yes, they are. Okay, parallel lines. So you could just take a look here. You could do, we see vertical, horizontal. This is two and four. Okay, and then this one is four and eight. So these simplify to the same rate, right? Because they're the slope and they've got a 90 degree angle between them. So by side angle side, these two are going to be equal. Um, and then sine of A is equal to sine of C. So let's take a look at angle A is right here. Okay, angle C is right here. These are the same. Since these two triangles are similar, these two angles are identical. So if we do the sine of equal angles, that's going to be equal. 
And then the sine of angle, or sorry, the cosine of angle B is equal to the cosine of angle C. That's also true because B and C are complementary. So if you remember that idea that um, the sine and cosine of complementary angles are identical, you could answer yes that way. You could also look at the sine and cosine. So we could actually look at the cosine of B and cosine is adjacent, which is two. Okay, and then you could figure out the hypotenuse here um, by doing Pythagorean theorem. So four squared um, plus two squared. So this is 16 plus four. So that's the square root of 20. And then remember that these two triangles are similar. Okay, and they're actually two times bigger than each other. So this hypotenuse is going to be two square root 20s. Or you could do the Pythagorean theorem and figure it out. Um, but so then if we do the sine of C, opposite is 4, hypotenuse is 2 square root 20. Um, 4 divided by 2 simplifies to 2, and we end up with the same ratios there. Number eight, my road of proof um, that triangle AED, okay, so AED is congruent to CEB. My's proof is incomplete. How can my fix her proof? So we know that side AE is congruent to side CE, okay, so she has this in her proof. Um, and angle A is congruent to angle C, so she has that in her proof. So by angle side angle triangle congruence theorem, the two triangles are congruent. So she only has two pieces of information in her proof. So she only has angle side so far. She doesn't have the um, second set of angles included in her proof. So the second set of angles would be these two angles. Okay, so she needs to add in right here um, that angle AED is congruent to angle CEB by vertical angles, or she could say because they're vertical angles. So I'll just write because they are vertical angles. Um, then we could say by angle side angle, because then she has all of the information that she's using included in her proof. So then her proof would be complete. 